स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया okay good morning everyone so in today's lecture i am going to cover two different topics namely the topics on broken extremals and in the later half of this lecture course i am going to talk about the hamiltonian formulation of the necessary condition for extremals okay so uh, so in today's lecture we are covering the topics of broken extremals and in particular i am going to cover the topic of uh, in broken extremal i am going to introduce the famous weierstrass the weierstrass erdmann theorem the weierstrass erdmann condition okay and also uh, the second half of this lecture will introduce the hamiltonian uh, the hamiltonian formulation of which is an alternative formulation of the euler lagrange uh, condition okay so so let me let me start the first topic so well so far what we have seen is we have we have found the extremals of several different types of functional but the underlying assumption of those extremals are that they are at least continuously differentiable up to order 2 if not then higher so today in this lecture we are going to relax that criteria and we will assume that the extremals are continuous but may not be continuously differentiable so so far the assumption is so we assumed extremals uh have at least two well defined derivatives the extremals have two well defined derivatives so we are as i said we are going to relax that assumption today okay so so this is not i just want to quickly give an example saying that there are several examples in this case of broken extremals or extremals which are not continuously differentiable so not always true right and the 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 example that we have in mind is the example that we have already seen in our lecture 3 so students should recall the example in geometric optics where we uh, found the optimal path that the light ray covered while following the fermat's principle okay so that was the example in geometric optics so please recall that example geometric optics okay so there in that example we found out a very easy way of finding well very uh, uh, you know and a way which did not involve any particular result a very easy way of finding the discon uh, the an extremal which was not continuous in its derivatives but we also promise towards the end of that example that we are going to derive the general conditions so in this lecture we are going to do exactly that okay so so before before i derive the general conditions for broken extremal or the weierstrass hartmann condition let us look at why we what is the significance of uh, of uh, finding these conditions or uh, what sort of extremals belong to this broken extremal category well one one quick example is there are you know there are several you know innocent looking functionals in which the extremals are not continuous at all forget about this uh, discontinuity in derivatives they are not even continuous uh, functions so so some problems so some problems don't admit 
don't admit smooth extremals don't admit smooth extremals uh, so the problem that i have is we have to find we have to find y of x to minimize minimize this functional f of y which is given by integral minus 1 to 1 y square 1 minus y prime whole square dx right and subject to subject to y of minus 1 is equal to y of 1 is equal to uh, well I have two different boundary condition y of minus 1 is 0 and y of 1 is 1 right. So, it seems that we can quickly find the extremal by uh, through the Euler Lagrange equation let us see what happens. So, we can see that for this integrand f it is purely a function of y and y prime and it, there is no explicit dependence on x. So, to find the solution we can directly use our Beltrami identity saying that h which is y prime f of y prime minus f is a constant right and when we plug the value of f I get that. So, I get the following we plug the value of f and we get the following expression y square 1 minus y prime square is equal to c 1 which is our constant right. So, uh, so uh, uh, let us try to solve this problem we could uh, to, to show the solution to this problem let us first assume that the constant on the right hand side is 0 right we will look at the case general case later on. So, case when c 1 is 0 right if c 1 is 0 then I have the solution to the Euler Lagrange equation as the following. So, this is equal to 0 or I am saying that y is 0 or I have y prime is equal to is equal to 1 plus minus 1 and this gives me y is equal to plus minus x plus a constant a right. So, either the solution is uh, a constant which is 0 or the solution is a straight line and further I have two conditions note that y of minus 1 is 0 and y of 1 is is 1 right. So, note that the first solution the first solution does not satisfy both these conditions. So, I am going to discard. So, this is not the solution that we are after, but notice the second solution. So, if I take y of minus 1 equal to 0, let me just assume uh, we students can check that even this solution does not satisfy both the conditions. So, the conclusion here is is neither neither solutions satisfy satisfy both boundary conditions right. So, I have that y of minus 1 is equal to 0 and y of 1 is equal to 1. So, both boundary conditions are not sat satisfied simultaneously by neither of the solution. So, let us now look at the case c 1 not 0 right. So, in that case I am going to get I am going to get I am going to rewrite this expression and write y prime as a function of the constant c 1 and y. So, I get that this is also equal to 1 plus minus 1 by y square root of y square minus c c 1 right. And when we solve that we solve that we get the following solution which is y minus c 1 square well y square minus c 1 is equal to x minus c 1 whole square which is uh, which if you draw the curve will be a rectangular parabola hyperbola rectangular hyperbola right ok. Uh, well we have a two constant family of solutions. So, we have c 1 and c 2 right. Now, the expectation is the constant c 1 and c 2 can be found uh, found through 
the boundary conditions that is present. Now, note the following. Let us draw this hyperbola. Uh, well, so first of all, let me find C1 and C2. If we plug y of minus 1 is equal to 0 and y of 1 equal to 1, I immediately get the constants C1 to be minus 9 by 16 and C2 to be minus 1 by 4, right. So, and so my equation, my equation is y is equal to x plus 1 by 4 whole square minus 9 by 16, okay. So, now if I were to draw this figure, if I were to draw this figure, let us see what this figure looks like. So, we will have, it is a rectangular hyperbola, it has two branches. Notice that uh, minus 1 comma 0 is here. So, this is my point 0, which is minus 1 comma 0, the first boundary point. And notice the second point is 1 comma 1. 1 comma 1 lies on the second branch and there is no way we will have an extremal which joins these two points because they are lying on two separate branches, right. So, so the conclusion here is that the boundary points, the boundary points are on opposite, are on opposite branches. The boundary points are on opposite branches and it implies that there are no smooth extremals no smooth extremals uh, connecting uh, connecting p0 and p1 right it's cl quite clear from the diagram so so which means that this problem is not going to admit any continuous solution let alone continuously differentiable solution so that is why we look for the broken extremals right or the condition which through which we can at least find extremals which can connect the boundary points uh, which are at most piecewise continuous right piecewise continuously differentiable so the broken extremals so typically i will have the following figure for for broken extremals So, let us say I am drawing the extremal y as a function of x and my starting point is x0, y0 and my ending point is let us say x1, y1. My broken extremal could be, could be the following like this, right. So, here at x star, at x star I have, I have the so called corner, right. So, the broken extremal although uh, we are going to deal with uh, continuous broken extremals, but they will not have uh, derivatives or they will have uh, not, not defined, the derivatives are not defined at least at some finite number of points. We call those points as corners. So, in broken extremals we look for, we look for continuous functions and we try to minimize minimize corners the the less the number of corners the better it is for us okay so this question is notice that euler lagrange equation uh, gives us the extremals which are continuously differentiable the way how euler lagrange equations are derived this question is are those class of continuous or continuously differentiable functions also extremals over a class of functions which are piecewise continuously differentiable, right? And the answer is yes, and it is given in the form of a result which we stated in the form of a theorem. So the theorem says, the theorem says, it's theorem 15, if I have, if a smooth curve, if a smooth curve y, uh, by a smooth I means that the required number of derivatives exist uh, of y gives an extremal gives an extremal of a functional 
f of y gives an extremal of a functional f of y over over the class of all admissible or the class of all admissible curves class of all admissible curves in some in some neighborhood of y in some neighborhood of y right gives class of admissible curves in some neighborhood of y then my function y of x gives extremals uh, of f of y over the class the class of all piece wise smooth piece wise smooth piece wise smooth curves in the same neighborhood right the same neighborhood or uh, in short i can say that the necessary condition for extremals can be extended to the class of piece wise smooth curves okay so the necessary the necessary condition this theorem says that the necessary condition for extremals can be extended to piece wise smooth can be extended to piece wise smooth curves ok so so our euler lagrange equations will still work now the second question that we ask is if that is the case the euler lagrange equation works how are we going to find these broken extremals so let me show you how we are going to find these broken extremals so let's look at in another slide so this question the second question that we have asked is how to find how to find these broken extremals okay now so to do that let us say let us say at the corner point at the corner x star at the corner x star we break the integral into two parts break the functional into two parts right so what we do is we write down our functional f of y to be f of y f1 of y plus f2 of y which is also the first integral becomes integral from x0 to x star over which we have a continuously differentiable solution of the integrand f of x comma y comma y prime dx and the second integral the second functional is over the interval x star to x1 of the same integral so we have broken the entire integral at the corner point so then so so let me draw this figure so we are talking about let's say uh, a functional of, of this form where where this is my corner point right so this is x naught this is my x1 right okay x naught and x1 okay so then uh, the requirement is that y is uh, continuously differentiable y is continuously differentiable up to second order up to second order except at the corner point except at x equal to x star right and further uh, i also require that the solution is at least continuous which means that the solutions y1 matches with the solution y2 at x star so they are at least continuous over the entire interval and when again the since we are following the similar strategy of finding euler lagrange we have to set up the first variation 
and that is we do by perturbing the function. Now, the question is what happens to these corner points during perturbation? It turns out that we can also change the corner points while perturbing our extremal and finding the variation in the functional. So, so what I said is the following in our first variation when we derive our Euler Lagrange equations, the location the location of corner points corner can be perturbed the location of the corner can be perturbed right so we can also have a similar situation of this form where now my new location of the corner is x star hat right so we can always perturb so this is also allowed in our derivation so which means that when we write down when we write down the first variation when we write down the first variation, I see that uh, the first variation delta f of eta comma y is limit epsilon tending to 0 uh, of the following integral 1 over epsilon times integral of from x 0 to x star hat. So, over this integral we have the perturbed integrand y hat comma y hat prime dx and uh, the other one when we take the first variation the other one is from x 0 to x star and over this we have the original uh, integration of the original integrand right plus plus there will be an integral there will be two more integrals right uh, from the other interval from x star to x 1 right. So, we, we, we do not, so right at this point we just ignore these two integrals to just highlight how are we going to write this difference right. So, whatever result we find out for this difference that I have shown will be also valid for the other difference. So, that is why we ignore the calculation, we ignore the calculation of this setup right because it follows a similar steps as in the first two as in the processing of the first two quantities here. So, so notice, uh, so in the last lecture we have derived the transversal uh, criteria, right. So, as with the transversal criteria, uh, if we notice this, uh, this difference of the integration integral quantity, uh, we expect that this will boil down to the Euler Lagrange uh, criteria. Uh, this difference plus the other difference will boil down to Euler Lagrange criteria plus some extra terms which will not vanish, right. So, what I just said is so as with the trans the transversal the transversal condition. Uh, we we get well we get Euler Lagrange equations we get Euler Lagrange equations plus additional Euler Lagrange equation plus additional terms right and those additional terms once we simplify will come out to be the following over the first interval the additional terms are p 1 the same transversal terms that we had found in transversal condition uh, p 1 delta y minus h 1 delta x right where where my so this is over the first over the first interval so let me just highlight so my first interval is the following this one and my second interval is this following. So, over this first interval my additional criteria is the qu this quantity right set equal to 0 right and so the additional terms are these quantities in in the first variation. What I am trying to say is we have not yet set the first variation to 0. So, I am just writing down 
the terms that we will obtain in the first variation. We will get Euler Lagrange in the integral as an integral constraint plus uh, these certain other quantities, right. Now, where where my delta x at x star the corner point comes out let let us say that this is capital x star and and my delta y at the corner condition x star is y star right so which means my hamiltonian uh, well my h the function h is by definition is y1 prime partial f partial y1 prime minus f and my uh, p1 the momentum is partial f partial y1 prime right okay so then similarly so i have uh, well uh, so this uh, so this is evaluated at from x0 to x star so x star is the upper bound right so at this this term is evaluated such that the evaluation at x star is the one on the right hand side it is the upper bound so similarly similarly for the second component for the second interval for the second interval the first variation will again give euler lagrange equations plus plus the terms of the form minus p2 delta y plus h2 delta x right when i say the second interval i am talking about this interval over which the perturbation is happening that is towards the right of x star right now notice that i have put in a minus sign in this term as compared to the previous term because now x star appears on the left so now x star the value evaluated at x star serves as the lower bound and hence the change in sign right so then so we combine we combine the first variation uh, we combine we combine first variation terms so i'm not deriving uh, very rigorously for the case of broken extremal because we have done so for the case of continuous extremal and so i'm just giving some basic ideas so variation so we combine the first variation terms and right now we ignore the interior uh, we ignore the euler lagrange equations because that needs well that will be true right so and ignoring ignoring the euler lagrange equations and that is done because we are we want we want to find only only the corner conditions right so the euler lagrange equations are are very well satisfied for smooth extremals but at the corner it is these two extra terms that will give us the necessary condition right so once we ignore the euler lagrange equation we get that the first variation of f will be the first variation uh, will be so this is my delta f1 this is my delta f2 so the first variation is delta f1 plus delta f2 and that is also equal to p1 minus p2 of delta y minus h1 minus h2 of delta x right and this is evaluated at x star on the lower bound okay so now uh, the corner conditions will be such that this will also be zero right so the so the first variation becomes zero when not only the euler lagrange uh, expression becomes zero but also the corner condition becomes zero only then we are guaranteed to have extremals so from here uh, so let me call this as uh, so this is the combined condition that we have at the corner we could have one quantity varying independent of the other quantity to get two sets of corner conditions so in general in general delta x and delta y could vary 
independently of each other right so not necessarily they are combined and then we will have uh, which means that the coefficients at the corner conditions would be separately zero and hence that gives me my corner conditions are the so called the Weierstrass Erdmann conditions. So, this is my these are my corner conditions or my Weierstrass Erdmann condition. Let me call to begin with, let us right away say that my Weierstrass Erdmann conditions are WE conditions. So, I am using a short abbreviation in my subsequent discussion. So, WE conditions. Right. So, from here I get P 1 at x star is equal to P 2 at x star and similarly H 1 at x star is equal to H 2 at x star. Right. Okay. So, then we could also rewrite this corner conditions by approaching we could say that H 1 belongs to the for uh, is the evaluation of the Hamiltonian for the function from the left of x star because y 1 is at the left of x star. The extremal y 2 as a is at the right of x star. So, this condition on the right hand side is evaluated on the right of x star and similarly for the other equation. So, writing writing corner condition uh, in terms of of limits uh, from left or right, I can very well uh, write that the conditions are p from x star minus is equal to p at x star plus and h at x star minus is equal to h at x star plus, right. Okay. So, let us 